Hi guys, so today I just thought I'd have a little play around with an old um, Hoyer lens actually and it's from an enlarger so back in the film days where you would project through your negative down onto the paper you wanted it to expose um, that's where that lens has come from so it's come off the machine, the, um, the enlarger machine it's got no focus uh, movement at all so it would have been either the machine moving up and down to focus onto the onto the paper to get the image sharp or it would have been bellows. I don't have those. Uh, bellows are actually quite expensive. I mean looking at about 100 quid or more I think for a set of bellows. So what I've done is I've got some extension tubes. Anyway, um, and also I've actually got a uh, I think it's an M39 uh, screw thread to e-mount adapter but it's actually got a focus um, rail built in so actually you can sort of use it as a focus ring which as well so that works quite well. So for a lens that cost me nothing and £24 for three sets of uh, extension tubes with no, they have no contacts in them at all, so no electronics in them and I think about £10 or something for the um, focal adapter. It, it should make quite a good macro lens for hardly any money. So anyway, uh, I'm going to turn the camera around now and just have a little play and uh, compare it to the Sigma 105 uh, macro on the A7R3, so both lenses on there, and uh, we'll take some shots of just some coins and stuff like that to see what the difference is. So, guys, here we have the Sigma 105 macro. So that's got the LAE A3 adapter on it, which works really well with the um, the Sony A7R3 and A7R2, um, the two cameras I've had, and actually on the A6300 it worked pretty well. Um, this is the little um, adjustable. Thing. So you rotate that, and it just extends it in and out from the lens. Oh, sorry, the you know the lens in and out away from the camera. So it's kind of like a a, a slightly moving focal plane. Um, these are three sets of extension rings. You can just unscrew them to make them shorter, longer, etc. Um, one set of these on that lens and that adapter isn't quite enough. So I thought, Do you know what, I'll buy two. Actually, I might as well just buy three because that way it will give us a lot more magnification. So it's a case of just um, screw the lens in, he says, without dropping it on the floor. That's called looking at the camera and not looking at what I'm doing. If it wants to go in. There we go. Okay, nice little nice and tight. So this lens here is beautiful, it's absolutely untouched and you'd expect it really because it's never been outside so this this lens would have spent its whole life inside a um, photographic stu uh, developing place so you know they would have been obviously using this in a, in a clean environment to do photos so it's absolutely lovely, the aperture and everything is beautiful um, really really nice bit of kit, so even that on its own is nice, so that's to an E-mount adapter so that's a M39 uh, adapter uh, screw in to an E-mount. It does go straight onto the um, the Sony, but I'll take a picture now with it on. And it's a shame it doesn't because it actually looks on the look at that as a nice little dinky lens. But the problem is. Um, it will not focus at all. It's, it's too close to it's too close to the um, the sensor. It will focus, however, if I stick one one set of um, extension tubes on, but not very far. So what I'm going to do is actually we're going to go straight ahead and put. I'm going to put two on because. Um, one has a bit of magnification. So what we'll do is we'll start with two and see how should have done that. We'll stick them on the A7R3. So oops, push on taking pictures. Um so basically it's gonna look like that now. Looks a bit ridiculous, but all in all you think about it, 
It's about the same size as that 105 there. It's a lot smaller glass, but what's it going to be like, you know, taking some photos? Uh, the only downside is that you're going to need a lot more light because, you know, the way it is. So what I may do is fight one of the studio flash because that's to get that ISO 200 you need a quarter of a second exposure for the amount of light in here. Um, sound like the aperture is shut completely. There we go. So let's try that, shall we? Should we take a shot? Sixtieth of a second. Actually, so I don't know if you can see on the screen, that is what you're getting. And that's with two ex uh, extension tubes. It's not pretty, you know, it's pretty good. Hopefully it's pretty sharp. You could probably do with a bit more shutter speed, to be honest. Or, you know, some flash, but I'm just using a bit of light at the moment. So, if we take that off, stick the next extension tube on. So that whole thing there is about th about 35 40 quid. But the benefit of these um, these old lenses here is they're sharp, really sharp. Because there's you know, nothing to them, there's no moving focus, there's nothing. It's just an aperture and a piece of glass at a certain magnification and it seems to be really really quite good. Right, anyway, so Let's stick that on there. So now it's looking pretty monstrous, but it doesn't weigh anything. So there's no overhanging weight off the end of the uh, off the end of the camera. And again, we're going to, have to turn up the ISO a bit now without using any flash, just to get the. So there you go. So oh, there you go. So that's with two extension tubes, and this is with three. So it's quite a bit closer. Uh, and for the video, this is literally just a demonstration. So what I will do is I'll get these onto a tripod, and I will shoot some very high quality shots. What I'm going to do now is stick the Sigma 105 macro lens on with the LAEA3 adapter from Sony and do a one to one ratio then we can see exactly what we've got so manual focus set the lens to one to one if you can see that I don't know. there you go and we shall take a shot and I'd say That's one to one ratio. So we with that other lens, that's gone way above. That could be three to one, possibly. Something like that. So for forty quid, we've now got a lens that is giving us some serious magnification um, to mess around with for hardly any money. So right, I'm gonna now gonna go and have a little play with this and uh, see what I can see what I can uh, sort of do. See what the difference is between a uh, you know very expensive you know, custom made lens that's for, you know, fully macro and some extension tubes that rattle a bit and an old lens from an enlarger. So guys, that's on the Sigma 105 macro at one to one ratio and I've obviously just panned in on it um, very slightly. So sharp, you know, easy to use, you know, plenty of aperture control. Um, this now is with the extension tubes, all three of them. I mean, it's impressive, but if you notice, a slight hot spot in the middle, and I guess that is from the lights being focused straight into the sensor. Um, so something you have to be a little bit careful about if it's really sunny, so it may damage the sensor. Um, this is only one piece of glass. There's no coatings or anything, but in control conditions, it's pretty good. So that is the 105 macro again, and this is the as two. That's um, actually got two of the. Um, extension tubes on and then we're on to three 
but you can still see there's a slight white patch right in the middle there. It's just the light's being pushed straight through, um, you know, in an uncontrolled amount, I think. Uh, this is actually the Sigma 105 on the three extension tubes, just out of interest. Um, you'd have to stack so many images to get it right, but, you know, it looks pretty good. But anyway, that's the video for now, guys, and I just thought it was a bit of fun. Um, that lens actually works, so I'm quite tempted to do a little bit of wildlife um, videography, maybe some ants or something running around in the summer when the ants come out, um, stuff like that. So that that's another another side of things. I mean, obviously some photos of them, uh, but I've got a focus rail. It's a um, a Velbon focus rail, so you put the whole camera and that lens and everything stays stable, and you basically wind the camera backwards and forwards to keep it in focus. Which will make it a lot easier to um, get get shots that are actually sharp. So anyway, for thirty or forty pounds, it was a complete complete laugh. Uh, and obviously, those extension tubes I can use for other things as well. So you know, it's just a case of experimenting and uh, just having fun. Anyway, guys, keep it up and uh, please subscribe and share with your friends and whatever. Um, and uh, keep shooting. Cheers, guys.